Hi, this is Adriana and you're watching my channel Spiritual Awakening with Adriana. Um, today's topic is can scientists believe in God? Uh, we often see a heated debate around the subject on what separates science from religion and whether scientists can believe in God. I would like to start by offering definitions of both. First, what is the science? A definition found on Google is that science is the intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world, world through observation and experiment. Um, definition of God is twofold. In Christianity and other monotheistic religions, God is the creator and ruler of the universe and source of all moral authority, the supreme being, and the second definition is that in certain other religions, God can be a superhuman being or spirit worshipped as having power over nature of human fortunes or a deity. And uh, now let's go back into the history of the humanity. Once upon a time, people were so afraid of thunders and they thought that God was responsible for them. Years went by and at some point scientists People that have to be very inquisitive by the very nature of what science is discovered that thunder is in fact caused by lightning. When a lightning bolt travels from the cloud to the ground, it actually opens up a little hole in the air and this is called a channel. Once then light is gone, the air collapses back in and creates a sound wave that we hear as thunder. This is all not something that God of Thunder does, but there are perfectly scientific reasons why this occurs and now we are at a point um, where we have this knowledge we understand fully why thunders occur and we no longer as civilization uh, as a human race we we no longer think that god thor in fact god of thunder had many names in polytheistic cultures over the years and in north germanic culture he was called thor the humanity protecting thunder god uh, we, we no longer think that thor is responsible for them so this is one example how our knowledge of the world around us expands our consciousness and understanding and uh, scientists in fact help debunk the myth over the years over the centuries gathering information knowledge about physics they help debunk the information and myth uh, that we were cherishing once upon a time in the past uh, that there is the god of thunder and they reduced it basically to the natural phenomena that is based in physics there is a very funny story about science and how human imagination can take us further than scientists uh, and it is about hg wells um, and in 1914 he published the novel the world set free the book is in fact a book about the world war in 1956 in which england and france fight germany and austria the book is so it was published in 1914 the book is based on the prediction of a more destructive and uncontrollable sort of weapon that the world has yet seen so it was a novel, it was um, an act of fiction that um, was written down in this novel. But uh, he in fact was in that book published in 1914, so long before humanity ever had it, long before the science ever imagined that there, there will be an atomic bomb. Um, he was in fact writing about atomic bombs and at the time when he, we did not have them. It's amazing. And his book was in fact so ahead of his time that in the World War in 1956, uh, he, he placed that World War in 1956, um, uh, and also fighting Germany and Austria, it was also quite, you know, um, telling. Uh, and this book was so fascinating for the Hungarian physicist, Leo Szilard, I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, um, and uh, this book triggered this physicist uh, fascination with atomic energy. After reading, reading a summary of a speech by British physicist Ernest Rutherford, in which Rutherford was critical of the idea of atomic power, Sillard was struck by the possibility of a nuclear chain reaction while crossing the street in London, 
and he patented this idea of a nuclear chain reaction in 1934. So in this example, we have a writer writing about a future that was not yet to be in a novel. So it was an art of fiction that inspired physicists to think of a nuclear chain reaction. And it is amazing how all those things sort of came together. And this is how the world around us gives us answers and brings us closer to understanding what God is within us. Today we are still faced with a lack of full understanding of the world around us in many areas of science, especially in quantum physics. We do not really know how quantum computers work, but we know they do work. So in, in accordance with Clark's first law, that any sufficiently advanced technology is basically in this indistinguishable from magic we can conclude that there are answers that we will discover in the future and that will open the new frontiers of understanding maybe one day we will think oh my god we were so stupid we did not understand this and it was just in front of us and i believe that redefining what god really is will be the very important step in making peace between science and god and one digression, when I talk about God and spirituality, I never talk about organized religions. While organized religions can definitely be your help on your road to spirituality, they are too much um, of corporate-like entities and structures uh, to really be taken seriously by anyone that understands spirituality at all. They can help, but they cannot be relied upon for all the answers. So. If we try to redefine God and we say that God is just a force that is still unknown to us and we still do not have ex explanation for some questions and um, that those questions that are most important are about the purpose of life, how we came to be and where we go upon our physical death, then science and God do not look so far apart. Because even with all the laboratories in the world, those questions are still unanswered. And we are not able to answer them as of now. And I'm not satisfied with a science that cannot with 100% certainty tell us if our consciousness, spirit, however you will call it, survives our death. And why we even have consciousness. Or how to ignite it in robots, for instance, uh, if you are talking about the artificial intelligence. And if you ask me about if evolution uh, is possible, if there is God, I say, of course, evolution is a process that is logical, scientific, and of this world. However, if we try just to think about uh, what Nick Bostrom, philosopher, says, that we might be living in a simulation, then evolution might be just a code, a program that is executed and that follows some very logical rules to evolve us into higher beings. And in that regard, higher beings that created the simulation might be what we now call God. So can a scientist believe in God? Of course he can, but not in a God with a big beard that prosecutes and tortures people if they miss the church on Sunday. His quest for a God has to be as distinguished as is the goal of science. So scientists will one day have the knowledge and understanding to systematically understand the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world before conception and after death, before the Big Bang and beyond. And they will be able to understand the entire world around us, physical, natural, but also spiritual. So redefining what God is and what science is makes for a very interesting future ahead of us and i'm looking forward to seeing the answers that we will get and i believe that the technology and uh, the development of science development of our consciousness development of our understanding what we really are is one of the crucial parts of that quest thank you so much for watching i hope you liked today's video if you did please hit the like button Please subscribe, hit the little bell. We publish uh, every Monday new videos and uh, we have lots of very interesting topics ahead of us. Uh, take a good care, have a great day and uh, I look forward to having you watch my videos very soon again. Bye.